What's up guys and welcome back to On The Brick with another custom LEGO build. This one is the Munificent Class Star Frigate designed by Tan Bricks with the instructions sold by Brick Vault. If you are interested in building this for yourself, a link to the instructions will be in the description down below, as well as a link where you can buy a part kit for it so that you can skip the hassle of BrickLink and sorting all the pieces yourself. This build was completed using entirely genuine LEGO bricks and consists of 1,780 pieces. Now while this is considered nanoscale, don't let that confuse you at all because this is still a pretty large set. The absolute most is made of those 1,700 pieces as they come together to form what ends up being a pretty decent build. It's not great, but it's really far from being bad. Now, this thing is 19 inches long, 10 inches wide, and when it's on its stand, it's also 10 inches tall. And you'll probably notice that mine is currently not on the stand, and I'll talk about why in just one second. So, this is a really nice build. I know I said that it was only decent, and I'll talk about why when we get to those parts. But in truth, the Munificent is a very difficult ship to recreate in LEGO thanks to the curves and odd angles that it has, but Tan Bricks did a really great job here. This is probably the best version of the Munificent class that I've seen done in LEGO form. When you look at this, you know exactly what it is. It's instantly recognizable, and when you start taking closer looks, you really see some of those nicer details and techniques used to make this all come together. One one of my personal favorite parts is this bone-like structure at the part of the ship. The actual techniques used are really simple, but the end product just looks really good. I also like the bridge up front, I just think it looks really cool. I don't really have that much to say about it, but I wanted to bring some attention to it. And then you have this side structure, or the understructure here, that looks very robotic and very industrial, as opposed to some of the other more well-known ships, like for instance, the N1 Starfighter, there is no sleekness here. This is just very, very broken up and raggedy, and it looks really cool. I love how by just looking at it, you can see how broken up and weird it is. But there was one small section here that did have a bit of a problem, and that's the front area here. This Technic piece is supposed to be filled with something that's basically just like a weapon. In fact, it's supposed to be filled with this shield piece, I want to say it is. But every single time that I tried, and believe me, I tried a whole ton, it just did not want to stick in there. No matter what I did, it always ended up falling out, and remember, these are genuine LEGO pieces that I built this with. Now, what's really weird is that the other side stuck perfectly fine, so I don't know if it was a problem with the shield piece, or just this side of the Technic brick, or what? But yeah, unfortunately that side just never stuck. Now, this midsection of the underside here is where you actually start the build. You repeat the process here a few different times, but I just, I love so much how this area looks. Now, it is a little tedious to build. If you do not like repetition, then this part is not going to be your friend at all because it's quite literally the same thing about four or five different times. But the end result does leave us with these cool looking angles, and it's actually a pretty strong structure as well. And it has to be because this underside is where the stand goes. But before we get to that, we need to finish with the engines here, which connect to that upper side. They're not really tedious to build, but they are a little tedious to connect, and again, we'll get to that in just one second. This midsection is the smoothest part of the build. It always stands out to me because of that. The wings on either side are also extremely smooth, and it all just comes together here in a part that is very distinct from the rest of this ship. But I do like how the greebling was done here with just enough different pieces Pieces, even though most of them are still gray, there is enough distinction here for it not to be too boring, and I like the use of like the bucket handles there, that's a clever piece choice. The wings themselves are pretty straightforward, there's nothing really too too special about them, they're pretty strong, they hold together well, and I like them. Now one other area though that you will probably have some issues with are these like back curve areas here where you have that giant curve piece and then like the green and gray stripes because these connections are done using what some would call illegal techniques meaning that the connections are a little looser than I would personally like. It's not a terrible section, you're not going to be pulling your hair out over it or anything, but you're probably going to end up spending just a little more time actually connecting it to the build 
then you'll probably want to. And then right in between those two sections is this little spire. It's a pretty straightforward build. Again, nothing too special with it. But this back section is pretty much what turned this from a great build to a decent one. Because this back section just did not want to stay on the build. This back curved section is way more difficult to build than it looks. Now that's not to say that it is challenging, it's just to say that there's a lot more to it than you might think. But unfortunately the connection to the main build is only like 4 studs. So while I was putting one side on it worked perfectly fine, but as soon as I tried to put the other side on, well this whole back section fell apart and I had to redo it. And after how enjoyable the rest of the build was, that really did just suck to happen. As I went from being so close to finishing this thing to suddenly having to redo the last two and a half hours of work. I actually have no idea if it was two and a half hours, it just feels like it was. But because of how some of these angles are done, it wasn't as easy as just putting it back together. I had to basically literally take it apart to put it back together. But with all of that said, once it did come together, boy does this thing look really good. I mean, I just... I am so happy to have actually built this thing. I'm not the biggest fan of the CIS, but that doesn't mean I can't appreciate a good build. Now I would love to have this be to scale to like a Venator, but this one that I have, um, oh, okay, bye Grogu, is not in the same scale at all, but that's okay because Brick Vault does sell a Venator that is at the same scale and maybe one day I can get that. So now with all of that said, why is this not on the stand? Well, this is why it got brought down just one more notch. The stand itself is perfectly fine. It's a pretty straightforward build, it's incredibly strong, and it does hold the build extremely well. The problem is actually getting it connected to the ship at all. Remember this midsection that starts the entire build? Well, there's nothing really holding these to a certain distance like what needs to be met on the stand. And you're not actually supposed to connect the stand until the very end after you've already completed the full ship. Something that I don't think is the best choice, in part because, again, there are some really fragile areas on this build. And if you're trying to, like, hold this entire thing with one hand while you're trying to align the studs with the other, you're just gonna have a more difficult time than is really worthwhile or necessary. And I know other people who've built this haven't had this issue, so do keep in mind that your mileage may vary. But for me, I always want to point out that there is a level of ease that I would like. I understand that custom builds are by nature going to be more challenging than your average Lego set. And that is part of the fun and why I very much enjoy them. But I do feel like that still gets taken advantage of sometimes, especially in places like this. Again, there's no reason for it to be this complicated. And it's not even complicated, it's just annoying. And the only other thing that I really wanted to talk about, because I only really noticed this in editing, are the curves here. These are done using flex tubes, and I think it's as good of a job as we can reasonably expect. So yeah, there are gaps and it's not the easiest thing, but personally, I think these are fine. Overall, like I said, this is still a pretty decent build. Even the downsides and the problems that I talked about aren't that big, I would still easily rate this like a 7 or 7.5 out of 10. The instructions were pretty easy to follow, the actual build is okay for the most part, like I said, 7 out of 10 there too, and the final design looks great. The cost of the instructions is, well, like usual, a little more than I would be okay with, but whatever. So hey, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and what other custom builds I should look at. If you liked what you saw, make sure you hit that like button so I can know, and subscribe if you would like to see more. Thank you all so much for watching, I'm still working on my Patreon page, it's been up and down so that's why I haven't been showing it recently, but I do appreciate all of you who have signed up for my Patreon. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching, appreciate you sticking around, and I'll see you in the next one.